<laughs> I'm Natalie. Uh, <laughs> We're all I'm four. four. I'm Izzy and I'm six. <laughs> I'm Noah. I'm eight. <gasps> Hello. <laughs> Izzy, say breakfast. breakfast. <laughs> Some of you have known us for a while, have been following along here or on Instagram. Um, but in case you're new or in case you don't know our story or all the details of our story, we thought that might be something fun mm -hmm. to share today. So we're going to kind of talk about what it was like to hear you're expecting triplets and what the last four, four years have been like raising them and going from a family of four to a family of seven overnight. I'm Chris and we met back in college mm -hmm. in 2010 yeah. and started dating and the rest is history <laughs> we got married you know we bought a little house uh, a foreclosed house mm -hmm. out on like 10 acres had a couple kids <laughs> and I had a pretty normal life <clears throat> but after i had our second child isabel um i ended up with a pelvic organ prolapse the ob highly advised me to not have more children um as you said it would just make it worse and then i would possibly have to have surgery upsetting to me we wanted a big family mm -hmm. um we were thankful for the two children that we had um but it was a kind of having like a dream taken away, um, which was really hard. And so I prayed a lot um, during that time, just praying for healing and crying out to the Lord, just asking like, please heal me so we can still have this big family. Turns out he was gonna answer that prayer mm -hmm. in a way that we never saw coming um, never even considered that as a way he was going to answer that prayer. Yeah. Um, you know, I ended up feeling a leading from the Lord that like, Hey, it's time for another baby and you should try for another baby. And so we did, and we got pregnant right away. Um, and it didn't take long to notice that there was, there was something different about this pregnancy. Um, I was way more exhausted. I was way more sick. I actually had morning sickness with my previous two pregnancies. I did not. I had nausea, but I never actually like threw up. So I took the test, you know, because I was excited, but I didn't anticipate it actually being positive. Um, and then I started showing very quickly yeah. um, to the point that like my my best friend like asked her husband one day at church, she's like, so how far along is Jenny again? But I just had this like gut feeling. The more things like happened and the farther along I got, I was like, I feel like this is different. I feel like there's twins. I was convinced that there were twins. And we went to our first midwife appointment and she did an, um, a Doppler. She thought she only got one heartbeat. And my, but I thought I heard two when she moved it up, but she's like, oh, it's probably just like an echo. It just sounds different, different angle, whatever. Because I think at that point, early on in the pregnancy, I think the identical twins' hearts were still beating like in sync. Mm -hmm. And then when she moved it up, I heard Zechariah's slightly different heartbeat. So, um, but because I was showing so far ahead, about four weeks ahead, um, she's like concerned about that. And so she sent us to get an ultrasound. So I was three months along when I got my first ultrasound. And, uh, you know, the ultrasound tech moves the wand on there. And she's like, oh, I see two babies. And so I'm thinking like, yes, I was right. I had this gut instinct and y'all didn't believe me. And I was right and I told you so. And then she moves the one up higher and she's like, oh, 
I'm sorry, no, there's three babies. And I, w I was like, what? Mm. Three babies for one more pregnancy, which is what the doctor was like, you know, don't have more, but if you do have more, don't have more than one more pregnancy. And then he gave us three <clears> for one. I didn't even know triplets was possible, uh, you know, outside of like maybe fertility stuff or whatever. I had no idea. So I literally looked at the tech and was like, how, how did this happen? And she gave me a really funny look. She's like, yeah, I think you know how it yeah. happened. But that wasn't what I meant. Um, and But then she she did explain. She's like, well, you released two eggs in one split. And uh, so like what, what sort of run through my mind at that point? Well, I was like really excited. I mean, I was freaked out. But I was excited because I'm like, we're getting our big family. We're going to have mm -hmm. five kids. Like this is insane. Um, but I started thinking like logistics, like, oh my gosh, we, we instantly just outgrew our house. We outgrew our vehicle. Like we're going to need a new house, new car. Like, how do you get three babies to like on a sleeping schedule? How do you feed mm -hmm. three babies? How do you go anywhere with three babies, you know, and all the diapers and like just the logistics started to overwhelm my brain. When she said that there were three babies, I was, I, well, I, Jenny grabbed my hand and I laughed. I was like, ha, ha, ha. like what? <laughs> um, I was thinking we're living in a two bedroom house already with four people, two adults, two kids. We we're in the middle yep. of putting an addition on. Which I was like, okay, this is it. We got the addition. All right, cool. Yeah, and we're then and and we instantly just outgrew it. We Even out, with the addition. Yeah, and uh, so we're thinking, how do we do that? How do you how do you care for three babies? Holy smokes, uh, night times with one is hard enough. How are you gonna do it with three? What is this, are we gonna be able to afford all this? How's this gonna work? Um, I mean, there were a lot of a lot of questions like that going through our minds and we didn't even know the the safety aspect yet or the, mm. the um, medical concerns. She's continuing the ultrasound. She, she starts going, hmm. And when you hear stuff like that, you know, I, uh, you instantly are like, what, what's going on? You know, when, when their face changes, when they start saying things like that. And then when she leaves the room and says she's got to go get the doctor, I knew something was wrong. Um, so my heart sank and I started to worry. Um, and so the doctor comes in and he takes a look and he kind of confirms what she thought, which is that they couldn't, they didn't see the identical twins in two different sacs. They were they were in one sac. So they were sharing a placenta and an amniotic sac, which means they were mono-mono twins, um, which put them at a very high risk of not surviving the pregnancy because when they're sharing the sac, there's a, a high likelihood, a high chance of the cords wrapping around both their necks or one of their necks and, um, you know, them, us losing them to like asphyxiation. I'm, t I'm the mom, I'm type A, I'm like, okay, so what do we need to do? What's our game plan? Like I've accepted, like, you know, I'm crying, but I've accepted this is, you know, this is happening as they're telling us the odds of like a, it's like a 20, 25 to 50% chance of them surviving. Um, and it like throughout the pregnancy, the chances would get higher up to the point of 32 weeks and then their chances of surviving went, would start going down. So they said 32 weeks is the max. We will allow you to carry the babies mm -hmm. um, and then we will take them via C-section. But you know, I'm like, what do we do? What's our game plan? And they're like, well, we monitor you. And I'm like, that's it? And you know, they're like, well, you'll probably be in the Indigenous hospital for some time. Um, but yeah, it's just mostly monitoring. Um, there's nothing we can do. There's nothing you can do to make it worse. There's nothing you can do to make it better. Um, we just kind of have to like wait and see what happens. And that was really hard for me because I like being in control. I'm a control freak and I had to let this situation go. I had to give it to God with open hands. And that was so <laughs> difficult. We leave and we're a mix of like shocked and concerned and excited. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we've got our two other kids with us. You know, Noah is three and Isabel was like around a year and a half old. <laughs> and and so we're, we're heading, heading home and we start calling our parents. Yeah. And uh, so I call my mom 
and I tell her, mom, you know, we had the ultrasound, we figured out what's going on. And so, you know, she's obviously being really concerned and she's like, well, what's, how's, what's happening? How'd it go? Um, and I'm like, I'm having triplets. And she's like, oh, ha ha, you know, very funny. What, what did they actually say? And I'm like, mom, I'm having triplets. And she's like, no, you're not. No, you're not. And I was like, mom, you say I'm finally, I had to say like, mom, I swear on the Bible, I am telling you <laughs> the truth. I am having triplets. And she was like, wow. She was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. She was like, I can't believe it, you know. If you follow us on Instagram or you've watched some of our vlogs where she's with us, you know she loves being a grandma. She loves her grandbabies. She loves kids in general. Um, and so like she was psyched. She was, I mean, she never let on really that she was anything but excited. I'm sure she was shocked, um, but she was mostly excited. So then we call Chris's parents. Mm -hmm. And they were... And they were, they were pretty, they, they took were, it pretty well. And, you know, they're like, oh, wow. Oh, that's, that's crazy. That's incredible, you know. Mm -hmm. But they were like really calm. And uh, then we go to hang up and they, I don't think, realized they hadn't hung up yet or that we hadn't hung up yet. And so like, as we're going to hang up, we just hear this. Oh <laughs> my. And then they hung up. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty funny. So, like, they were pretty shocked, but they played it off yeah. pretty well. Yeah. Um, so that, those are some phone calls that, like, we'll never, ever forget. And I'm sure they won't either. We had an appointment to have an ultrasound to check on the babies. Um, initially, it was, like, every, every other week, and mm -hmm. then it was every week. And I remember always crying on my way to each one because I never knew... You never knew. You never knew what you were gonna hear. Like, were they gonna still see three heartbeats and three healthy babies? Um, and it was just really, it was really hard, that unknown. And I'll never forget, there was one appointment where I loved most of my physicians, my maternal fetal medicine physicians, but there was one um, who had a different worldview than us and um, there was one appointment, um, and he was like, you know, he basically, he didn't outright say it, but he hinted at re reducing the pregnancy and or choosing to not intervene if something happened to one or both of the twins, because he's like, you know, there's nothing wrong with baby C. Mm. And, um, yeah. if if we try to save the twins, um, he's gonna get the short end of the stick that he doesn't deserve by being born premature when he doesn't have to be born premature. Which, uh, it, looking back, was kind of like, I feel like a naive statement anyway, because I feel like 33 weeks is considered full term for triplets. It is still preterm. But like the chances of me carrying triplets to full term, even with an uncomplicated multiples pregnancy is pretty low. I'm sure people have done it, but it's unlike, it's uncommon. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I, I just looked him in the eye and I said, look, they were conceived and created together and they're gonna see this thing through together for better or worse. Um, that it was our mentality. God gave us three babies and with all every, everything that was in our control, we were gonna make sure that I grew three babies and three babies made it. Um, but then there was another appointment with a different doctor where we were meeting with a neonatologist and he was going over all of the risks mm. that risks and complications and developmental delays um, that you could expect based on if they were born at a certain week gestation. He's like, okay, if you have your babies at 26 weeks, this is what you're looking at. If you have them at 28 weeks, this is what you're looking at. Um, and it was so much, and of course I'm super pregnant, you know, like triple pregnant. Um, and the hormones are all over the place anyway. Yeah. So I'm really emotional taking this in and I'm trying to hold it together because it's very overwhelming and it's scary. Um, and, you know, we decide that at 26 weeks, I would be admitted to the hospital for 24 hour um, monitoring of the babies 
after the neonatologist left that appointment, my maternal fetal medicine doctor um, spoke with us and gave us some some Bible verses to pray. Um, and I know that was a risk for him to do, um, but it was such a comfort to us. And that he talked about Psalm 91. Mm -hmm. And that is the Psalm that I did pray and he prayed over the triplets, um, the whole pregnancy and in the NICU. And um, it is the same Psalm that I continue to pray over our kids um, today. It's hung up uh, on our wall yeah, in the bedroom. Yeah, it's in our bedroom, and it's something that's, like, very, very special um, to us. So, at 26 weeks... There it is. We I got admitted, and that was hard, too, because, like, as a mom, I felt very torn. Because I had two babies at home who were still very little and really needed me. And then I had three babies inside who needed me to, to survive. Like, they needed me to do this to, to survive. Um, and so I knew what I had to do, but it also wasn't easy to do, to, to know that I was leaving my other two kids and not going to be with them for six weeks. Like, how was that going to affect them? Were they going to be okay? You know, I knew I was going to get lonely. We, I had never been apart from them. Um, I don't think overnight ever at that point, they were still so young. I don't know we'd ever been apart more than like a few hours for Chris and I to go on a date. Mm -hmm. um, so that was a lot. And it did, it was hard on them. It was, Izzy was pretty young. I don't think she, I'm sure it affected her in some way. Um, but not in a way that like you would ever notice. Mm -hmm. um, but like Noah was old enough where he became very like angry. Mm -hmm. He became very angry and grumpy even when he came up to visit me. Um, and I knew, I knew like he wasn't actually angry at me or he was angry at the situation, but that was still like really hard to see, um, and hard for Chris to, to navigate at home because he became Mr. Mom at home mm -hmm. for those, <laughs> those six weeks I was in the hospital. He had to take time off work and be Mr. Mom. Um, but I, I'll never forget, like, it was so hard when, when he left. When they dropped me off and I was admitted and then it was time for him to go. Because we also had not ever been apart that long since we've been yeah. married. And yeah. he's my best friend and he's my rock. And I, we're going through this difficult thing and now we got to be separated. So after I dropped Jenny off at the antepartum unit, um, it really became real for me when I looked over and her coat was there, but she wasn't. And it was just the, I knew it was just the start of a six week where I wasn't with her. And it turned out it was actually even longer than that because she had to stay after the C-section. So that really hit me. And it was difficult being, it was difficult being apart from you. And it got to show me all the things that you do that I took for granted. That then I was like, oh my gosh, I need that woman back. <laughs> um, but, uh, and yeah, so I got a taste of what you do and how difficult it was. And it was very difficult. It was hard, it was hard to be apart from her and to deal with the kids and then their attitudes were changing because Jenny was gone. Mama. Hi, hi, mama. Hi, mama. We, we love you and we miss you and we're thinking of you and we hope that this video brightens your day whenever you're feeling sad. So, Noah, what do we have to say to mommy? Yes, indeed, we love you, Mama. We miss you, Mama. And anyway, we're looking forward to seeing you again tomorrow, and we're looking forward for you to come home. We're really proud of what you're doing, um, making the sacrifice and being a good, strong mommy. We just want to let you know we're proud of you, and we love you, and we miss you, and, and um, you're doing a, an awesome thing for, for our children. So, so at the hospital, um, you know, the, the belly bands they put on you when you're like in labor. I had those on almost all the time. So they would monitor for two hours and then I would get like 30 minutes to an hour break and then they'd put them back on. Um, so I was in bed most of the time with the monitors on uh, for six weeks and then they would let me sleep for like, I think it was like four to six hours at night. Um, and then they'd wake me up really early and put them back on again. And they were so tight because <laughs> they had to make sure they got all the baby's heart re heartbeats that felt like it was so hard to breathe. I mean, it was already hard to breathe, but with all three of those things on, it was really hard to breathe. 
Um, and it got, I, I got very depressed. I got lonely. I got depressed. Um, it got to be a lot. Um, and there was one night where I, Chris came to visit and I was just crying. I'm like, I have to leave. I have to leave AMA. I, I cannot do this anymore. I cannot stay. I have to go. I kind of just like, kind of had like a panic attack. Um, and you know, Chris and the nurses were able to talk to me and calm me down. And, and I think even in the back of my mind, when I was freaking out, I knew that I would not actually leave. I knew, I knew I had to do what was best for my babies. Um, but I just needed to like release those feelings. Um, and it's good that I didn't leave because I think it was like a week later, we almost lost Natalie. So in between my stay, we had had a couple ups and downs. We had had, I had some preterm labor. I had some bleeding and they were concerned about that. I had to take um, some medication to stop the labor um, at 27 weeks. So, but for the most part, things had gone well up till that point. Um, and it was on the night shift um, and I didn't know those nurses as well, but one of them comes in, she's like, you know, we're having some trouble getting a heartbeat on baby B. Now, for those of you who really follow with our family, you know, baby B is actually Joanna. However, they were given letters in the womb and then they were assigned new letters when they were born. So baby B in the womb was Natalie. We knew it was, we knew that it was Natalie that became baby A when they were born because of what side she was on because after a certain point in gestation, they didn't have any more room to be flip-flopping. Um, so they lost a heartbeat on Natalie. And so she's like, I'm gonna have you rotate um, to try to like, if you know, dislodge the cord um, and get that heart rate back. Um, and she went to call the doctor um, and then she left. And of course I'm there alone. So I call Chris, I'm crying, I'm freaking out, I'm shaking. Um, and you know, he starts praying. It's really late at night. Um, it was like 11 o'clock. Yeah. About. Um, and so then I, you know, I hang up and it's just me in that room alone. And I just was so scared of losing her. And I all of a sudden had like this peace come over me and all of these worship songs and Bible verses just started flooding my mind and I just started praying them and singing them. And um, I felt, I felt the Lord's presence in the room. I felt Jesus in that room. And I 100% am convinced that he came into that room and he made sure that she was okay. Um, it is, you know, people can scoff at that and they can say whatever they want to say. But unless you were in there, unless you were experiencing that with me, which even if you were in the room, you may you or may not know. have experienced it, mm -hmm. that with me, um, you you really can't tell me that's not what it was. So, um, you know, thank the Lord she survived. Um, and I only had a couple weeks to go after that until mm -hmm. I reached 32 weeks. We ended up celebrating Izzy's second birthday in the hospital on the atrium of yeah. the antepartum unit. Yeah. Um, I waddled on down there uh, because the her birthday and the triplets birthday are actually only 11 days um, apart. So May is a very busy month for us. Yeah. Um, but yeah, then it was go time and they were they were delivered the day after Mother's Day. And I remember prepping for the C-section. I was very nervous. I was very scared. I mean, I just read an article a few weeks before of another mom who like had triplets and then postpartum she got a blood clot and like died. So I was so scared of postpartum complications. I was so scared of the risk of bleeding out. I mean, it was such a high risk of bleeding out that every, every three days in the hospital, the phlebotomy department came to my room and did a blood draw to a fresh sample of my blood type, I guess, yeah, in I think, the lab, yeah, yeah. Um, so that they made sure they always had my blood type on hand for a transfusion if I needed to have an emergency C-section before the day we had scheduled. And, you know, 
then the day came and they, they wheeled me down there and I will never forget like I was so exhausted and tired from the stress and the physical drain and I was so afraid going into that room um I was just crying and you know they're like you gotta walk from here and Chris was with me and so was my favorite nurse I had her come in with me and uh, she helped actually get some video of their birth we walk into that room and like there were so many people there were so many people there were med students nursing school students there were um, the anesthesiologist and his team there was the my maternal fetal medicine doc who was going to be doing the c-section and all of his assistants and his um resident resident mm, there were yeah there were yeah. two residents watching um us. and then there was the neonatologist and like three NICU nurses per like um warming unit in the room um and then all the other surgical staff that's moving around and um so it was it was a lot of people and so it's kind of overwhelming chris was like you're so calm you're doing so good and i'm like i'm freaking out in my head right now i'm just i just kept being like just breathe just breathe i just was staring at the ceiling and breathing and then you finally heard that first baby cry mm -hmm. it was so sweet and so sad at the same time because it was so different from a full-term baby's cry yeah. like mm -hmm. it was so different it was unlike anything i'd ever heard it's almost like a cat yeah. like a meow like so small and we had to face the NICU um that was hard too because like your time was divided between the kids at home and the kids in the NICU and then in the NICU the girls were in one room and Zach was in the other so if I was like with the girls and I heard alarms going off next door in Zach's room you know and I was holding them I couldn't like just get up and go see what was going on um so I mean if you're a NICU mom and especially if you had other kids before being a NICU mom, like, you know, like the pull and the strain on your heart during the NICU stay is something that you only understand if you've been through it. Um, and so that was very hard, but thankfully we didn't have any major complications in the NICU. We had some minor ones, um, but no major ones. And he had to go back to work after I had the C-section and came home. Um, because he had no time off, like he had like one week left and he wanted to save it for when the triplets actually came home. Mm -hmm. So when I came home from the hospital, I had to jump back in. I had to be mom, uh, even though I was recovering from the, the C-section. And when he got home, you know, one or both of us, either we'd both go up and take turns in the NICU and take turns being in the NICU and being with the kids, or he would come home, watch the kids, and I would run up to the NICU and bring any breast milk I had pumped. They were there for a month. They spent a month in the NICU, and then we were blessed that they were all able to come home like on the same day, which is really uncommon. Um, and we were so, I mean, we were so happy to finally all be under one roof after everything we've yeah. been through. Um, and you know, that's when it got real. That's when I got crazy. It was like, oh my gosh, you're sending me home with three babies. And like, we really have to take care of three babies and how we're going to do this. And so being who I am, if you follow on Instagram, you know who I am and I am the queen of schedules. So I made a schedule and we stuck to a schedule and it was like that for a while. We ran our family kind of like the military, not in like a overbearing way, but in a, we stick to the schedule way. You know, we made it work. It was crazy, but we made it work. And you know, the, the older kids never felt jealous because we made sure to spoil them with love and the grandparents would come over in the evenings to help. During the day I was on my own. Um, our parents are not retired and we could not afford a nanny even if I had agreed to wanting a nanny, which I don't know that I would have because I am a control freak. Um, so it was me and the kids during the day and we made it work. The, the older two helped me. And they like them. I think it helped them bond with the triplets. Um, and I think actually, you know, I think part of it working so well when they came home is that everyone was just, everyone, including my younger kids, were just so thankful that we were together. 
we didn't have to divide the time between the hospital and home. Chris and I made a determination early on that even though we're having triplets and that's crazy and that's gonna require a lot of work to do anything, we were not gonna let that keep us from doing all the other things that every other typical family would have or things that we would have done if we had only had two kids. We weren't, we were still gonna do all those things. We were still gonna go to the zoo. We were still gonna go on adventures and do things. And so once the triplets were old enough to do that, where like it was safe to, to, to do that um, with their immune systems and stuff, we did it. And we, we just kind of like, you just do it. You just Nike, it just, you figure it out. And it was crazy, but it was fun. I mean, we were exhausted and it was nuts, but I, I mean, I do, I want to do it all over again. Now that I'm on the other side of it, seeing, like knowing what I know now, knowing about all those like triple the baby giggles and triple the baby smiles and the cuddles and the, like, and it's still hard now. I feel like it's a different kind of hard now. Like potty training, like we got through it. Like they might, you know, be crawling out of cribs and be getting into their diapers and smearing poop everywhere or whatever, or sleepless nights. I mean, you know, potty training, finding, finding poop in the corner of the bathroom and finding poop in the closet and things like that. Like it was crazy. Um, but so much it's poop. like a different kind of hard now that they're getting older. Cause now they're like just, they're, they just argue more because they're all more, they're, they become who they are. They're becoming more individuals. Um, it's, I still love it. I was really surprised to find once, once we got them home and started doing life with multiples as family of seven, how much I loved it because I was always the girl at the ultrasound with my first two who was like, I will be fine as long as you tell me that they're healthy and, and then that there's only one. I would always say, I cannot do more than one baby. I cannot, I would never be able to do that. And then God gave me triplets. And it's like, when you talk about it, you get like you plan and God laughs. I can't imagine how much he was laughing those first two two babies. Or even before that, when you were saying you didn't even want kids. I didn't want kids at all, yeah. initially. Yeah. God, was, God was probably rolling. Yeah, look at me now. Look at you now. It's a beautiful life. We love our life. We love our family. We love mm -hmm. all of our kids. Um, and life's, life is either, what is the quote? It's like, life is either a daring adventure or nothing at all. Hey, baby. Yeah. Hey, baby. What you doing? What are you guys doing about? Are you looking at each other? That's kind of like our story and really if there's anything else that we wanted to touch on my blog which um, is unexpectedblessings.com I have all the schedules that we used up on there and I also have a post about like all the baby gear we used oh yeah okay so once we got them home I can't believe I forgot to talk about this once we got them home we went through like 18 to 24 bottles a day it was like we were always like washing and sterilizing bottles and um, always yeah. it was crazy and then everything became an assembly line so like bath time you had like if we were blessed to have one of the parents over you would have a baby like prepper a baby runner and like a baby lotioner pjer and mm -hmm. then the person washing the baby and we would go through this like cycle for like every baby 
you know, and you just kind of kept it moving. Um, and so we would do that like every other, every other night. And then in between those nights, um, unless there was like a big blowout or something, um, we would do what we call like a wipey bath. So like we would take like the honest wipes and we would just wipe them down mm -hmm. <laughs> with the baby wipes. Um, and that's just what we did to make it work and it worked and we, yep. I don't know, you find a way. Yep. We would, um, uh, when they were little, we would prop them up. We wanted to keep them on the same schedule. Yes. Like with feedings and stuff, because that was the only way with two other kids that I was juggling, we could make it work. Yeah. And so, um, after talking to another, um, veteran triplet mom, um, she said, you know, her husband used to hold two bottles in one hand and then one bottle in the other and feed all three. And so we would, we figured out how to do that. And, um, <clears throat> we would prop them on boppy pillows and do that and feed them that way so that we could keep them on the same schedule. And, um, that was nice too because then like we could each take a night shift by ourselves yep. um so that both of us ended up getting more, more sleep, sleep yeah. um which i think really helped too the, the baby, baby curing baby brezza formula pro that thing is awesome but like i think not long after around the time we stopped needing it praise the lord it finally kicked the it, bucket yeah, but it, it died. we calculated like how many bottles it had made it was in the thousands and it was in the thousands like that thing was a champ it, it was a, yeah. it was truly a champ it took a licking <laughs> and kept on ticking until we were done with it yeah yeah so. that was fun anyway um hopefully you enjoyed like this like kind of art telling our story and who we are and um Kind of like an intro for those of you who are new and just walk down memory lane for those of you who aren't who kind of know something of our story mm -hmm. um so yeah that'll be fun to do but i'm hoping to do some upcoming videos on like our kindness coin system we do and like a day in the life homeschooling um morning evening routines and um things like that which will hopefully be like helpful for somebody too so um Thanks for watching. Uh, hit the like button and subscribe if you want to follow along and see more of our life. And hopefully, I keep saying, I keep saying, hopefully we'll have something exciting, you know, to announce mm -hmm. one of these days. So we'll yep. see. We'll see what happens. But anyway, we'll see you next time. See ya.